So what we'll do today is that, um, as I said, the kind of all important question uh, that we wanted to uh, cover uh, is about the complexity and the compartmentalization uh, that seems to happen as these organisms have evolved. Um, I went back to pull up something that I think will be of interest, which is uh, for many reasons. Um, and this is um, a really interesting timeline, right, of um, the evolution um, of uh, the early uh, eukaryotes, right? Um, and, and this is plotted against uh, the atmospheric oxygen level, okay? And this is an important point uh, to keep in mind as we think about um, eukaryotes or complex um, cellular systems evolving, which is um, that um, the availability of oxygen had um, a significant impact um, on the development of these um, eukaryotes, right? Uh, so you can see the early living organisms and then uh, you have the first photosynthetic cells, which are, you know, very early uh, cell types. You have the origin of the cyanobacteria, uh, the first aerobic prokaryotes um, as the oxygen content now started improving uh, on the planet. Um, and that oxygen then uh, led to many changes that were possible for cells to make, including the kind of energy, for example, uh, that they may need, right? Um, and this allowed for the complexity uh, that we are thinking about uh, to come into play, right? Um, there is a really nice video uh, that I'm going to share uh, right now, which um, summarizes some of what we spoke last time and also talks about uh, this um, idea of um, how prokaryotes and eukaryotes could be different, right? So we're going to watch that video. We're going to look at the compartmentalization that exists. And briefly, remember, we are going to look at each of these components as we go along. This is just an introduction to the fact that there is this kind of compartmentalization. And then we'll, we are going to try in this class to talk a little bit about and get your opinion um, on, um, on, on what that complexity could mean, right? Um, and what that, uh, what and why that compartmentalization exists, okay? So first let's, um, let's look at this video. All living things are made up of cells. There are many different types of cells in our bodies, including bone cells, cartilage cells, blood cells, muscle cells, and nerve cells. The broadest classification of cells is into two groups, eukaryotic and prokaryotic. There are a number of differences between these two types of cells. The main difference is that eukaryotic cells have a double membrane bound nucleus, which contains the cell's DNA. Prokaryotic cells do not have a nucleus, only a nucleoid, which is the central open part of the cell where the DNA is found. Eukaryotic cells also have other large, complex, membrane-bound organelles, which prokaryotic cells lack. These include mitochondria, rough and smooth endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi complex, and in the case of plant cells, chloroplasts. Organisms with eukaryotic cells are called eukaryotes, and they include all animals, plants, protozoa, and fungi. Organisms with prokaryotic cells are called prokaryotes, and they include bacteria and archaea. For millions of years, prokaryotes were the only form of life on this planet. Eukaryotes came later as a result of the process of evolution. Another difference between eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells is their size. Eukaryotic cells are generally larger than prokaryotic cells. Eukaryotes are mostly, although not entirely, multicellular organisms whereas prokaryotes are always single-celled or unicellular organisms. Examples of unicellular eukaryotes include amoebas, paramecium, and yeast. The structure of the DNA in eukaryotic cells is different from that in prokaryotic cells. 
In the nucleus of eukaryotic cells, DNA forms tightly bound and organized chromosomes. Prokaryotic cells contain just a single loop of stable chromosomal DNA stored in the nucleoid. The nucleoid is not a structure, but the area where the DNA is found. Both types contain ribosomes, but in eukaryotic cells, they are bigger and more complex and bound by a membrane. Most eukaryotes reproduce sexually. The offspring have genetic material that is a combination of the parent's genome. Prokaryotes, however, reproduce asexually. Their offspring are clones of the parent cell, which come about through binary fission. Finally, prokaryotic cells have a larger surface area to volume ratio than eukaryotic cells, which results in a higher metabolic rate and therefore increased growth rate and shorter generation time. While eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells are quite different in their structure and processes, they do share similarities. Ribosomes are one feature they have in common, but both also have a cell membrane composed of phospholipids and proteins. The membrane provides a barrier between the external and internal environments of the cell and selectively allows certain materials to pass through. Both types of cell have DNA as the basis for their genes, although the structure is different. The genetic material regulates cell function and contains the coded information that is passed on to offspring. Both also contain cytoplasm, but in eukaryotic cells, it is defined as everything within the cell outside of the nucleus. In prokaryotic cells, the cytoplasm refers to everything contained inside the cell membrane. The gel-like cytosol is a major part of the cytoplasm in both types of cell. This solution is the site of many of the cell's metabolic processes, such as the synthesis of protein. So one of the things that um, uh, you know, strikes you is how, and we uh, you know, alluded to, the, to, you, to this earlier, is that um, there is indeed um, you know, this um, change in complexity that happens as um, you know, cells go from being prokaryotic to eukaryotic. eukaryotic. Um, this um, you know, timeline that we were looking at um, and uh, you know, everything on the y-axis that you see in the lower axis is in billions of years, right? And so it takes uh, a long period of time for these changes to happen. Uh, the increases that you are seeing, for example, in oxygen levels um, are very gradual. And remember that for many organisms, you know, for us, we need significantly higher percentage of percentage of oxygen to live. A lot of these cellular systems uh, don't actually need a lot of oxygen um, and can survive even at the bottom end um, of, that, of that curve, so to speak. Um, so clearly, uh, there is this uh, evolution of structure. Some things are, however, common, okay, and be it prokaryotes or eukaryotes. And one of the things for early life to have evolved uh, that, is, um, that is vital, uh, like with complex eukaryotes as well, is, is the presence of this boundary, right? So the cell membrane, and, and remember, each of these structures we are going to pick up and discuss. So, so, you know, so be patient to learn more about them. This is just to introduce you to what structures that the cell, uh, does, that the cell carries, right? Um, is, the, is, the, is this boundary uh, to be formed? something that would define what's outside and inside. And such a boundary can do many interesting things for, for uh, the creation of a cell, right? It could um, change, for example, the composition inside versus outside. It could regulate what moves in and out. Um, and these are largely made up of uh, lipids. And we'll come to uh, when we discuss the cell membrane on, on why lipids were chosen. Um, we obviously have the, the nucleus, right? And, and in eukaryotic cells, um, you know, the nucleus is a, is a much more organized structure as compared to prokaryotes. Um, and so is the DNA within the nucleus, right? Which is kind of wrapped around uh, histones um, to make uh, these chromosomes which are very distinct structures, uh, which carry a lot more content of DNA, of course, uh, but also their organization, regulation, the fact that there are introns, exons, all these things, uh, you know, happen uh, 
to the DNA when it is uh, part of these uh, complex structures in chromosomes, right? The nuclear membrane again talks to the cytosol, right? So the nuclear uh, nucleus also has a membrane. Um, and like with the cell membrane, where the purpose is essentially to be able to separate what's outside and inside, the nuclear membrane also has this function of being able to segregate, um, you know, what's, what's outside um, and inside the cell. Uh, inside the nucleus, right? And that segregation allows for a lot of control, uh, which is something that uh, is a common theme uh, you will see as we talk about how, um, you know, organelles are, have evolved and, and what this compartmentalization means for these organelles. Uh, we have uh, the energy centers of the cell, which are mitochondria, which actually also form a very interesting basis of the theory of how complexity may have evolved. And we'll come to that theory um, at the end of this particular class, and we'll discuss that uh, at length in the next class as well, right? So, so the mitochondria are another important players. Then we have ribosomes, uh, right, uh, which build, um, which build proteins um, and you know are associated with um, RNA um, and uh, you know use the information that's coming in the RNA to make the proteins that the cells need. Uh, we have endoplasmic reticulum right um, and the endoplasmic reticulum again is a network of membranes uh, that um, you know talks to the nucleus uh, you know has two versions smooth and rough and we will come to both of them um, and um, the presence of the ribosomes um, on the rough endoplasmic reticulum is what allows for protein synthesis to take place, right? We have the Golgi complex, um, which is uh, again, something that's a network of uh, membranes that is present inside the cell, um, which we, we will discover uh, works um, as a packaging and processing center inside the cell, right? And now uh, allows things that are synthesized from the ER, proteins that are synthesized from the ER to go be processed in such a way that before they can be delivered to different parts inside the cell, including the cell membrane. We have things like lysosomes, uh, which are uh, very unique um, uh, structures that are filled with digestive enzymes that are able to digest things, break them down when required. Um, we have structures like the centrioles, uh, from which cytoskeletal components um, like um, the mitochondria originate, right? Sorry, the uh, microtubules originate um, and um, distribute throughout the cell. Um, we have the cytoskeleton itself, right? That is made up of multiple components. Again, all of this we will come to uh, when we talk about uh, the cytoskeleton later. Um, but the cytoskeleton is again an integral part. It's also integral in keeping many of these organelles um, and structures in very distinct locations inside their cell, inside the cell. Right. Um, and along with this, there are distinct structures that are found in the plant cell as well. Um, along with the cell membrane, the plant cell um, has a cell wall that is made up of cellulose, uh, which adds uh, an important layer of protection and structure uh, to the um, to the plant cell, which is distinctly different from animal cells. Plant cells also have this big vacuum which stores um, water and plays an important role, uh, you know, and stores starch as well, and plays an important role uh, in keeping the cell pressurized, which is again a big distinction between animal cells and plant cells. And they also have, unlike, um, you, know, you know, cells, um, eukaryotic cells, uh, these carry um, chloroplasts, right, which are distinctly different uh, from the mitochondria, um, but functionally may be similar in what they do for the cell. Um, and this theory, uh, which is called the endosymbion theory, which we will come to, uh, you know, essentially suggests how uh, chloroplasts and mitochondria might be examples of things uh, that got integrated into cells, um, allowing for the development of the complexity as we know it, right? Um, so, so it's this um, uh, complexity that we are talking about in terms of how things are built. Um, and the fact that there is compartmentalization that is taking place, which are two inherent, uh, you know, properties that distinguish eukaryotic cells from prokaryotic cells. Now, one of the things we uh, already looked at and, and has been suggested on more than one occasion is the, is the size of the eukaryotes, right? And, and so that's, again, uh, an important distinguishing characteristic or property that they have. Um, but along with that, 
we will uh, you know we will see how uh, complexity and compartmentalization both happen in very prominent ways uh, in eukaryotes as compared to prokaryotes